Early in the morning, Peter found himself needing to use the brakes forcefully. A stray dog raced at the automobile in front of him, startling him. After a little while, the cops arrived and approached the automobile while brandishing their weapons. It was, out of the vehicle, they cried. The contents of the automobile rendered both cops pallid a few seconds later. The man was forcibly removed from the automobile by the cops, who had no pity on him. They informed the driver, you have the right to remain silent. And he complied. The driver's expression gave away that he was transporting illegal material and that he was a criminal. The police advised Peter to maintain a safe distance because they had no idea what to anticipate. The way the driver acted indicated that there was a significant item concealed in the trunk. The police were completely taken aback by what they saw when they opened the trunk. But why was the dog pursuing the automobile and what was in the trunk? Let's travel across time. Welcome to Amazing Truth Channel. Do not forget to subscribe and activate the bell button to receive all new. Now go to the story. The week started as usual for Peter. He was on his way to work, driving his regular route while drinking his coffee to go. Then, a red car in front of him caught his attention. The car was driving extremely slowly, forcing Peter to drive slowly as well. Peter worried about being late for work, but right when he wanted to grab his phone to check the time, he saw a running dog appear in his side mirror. The dog turned out to be extremely quick, and given the slow speed of the red car, it didn't take long for the dog to catch up. Once the dog ran next to the red car, it started to bark aggressively. What did the dog know that Peter didn't? Shortly after the aggressive barking of the stray dog, the car sped up. The dog realized it couldn't compete with this speed and decided to return. Peter followed the car for now, but once they reached a crossroad, the red car took the right exit whereas Peter had to go left for work. Many things were crossing Peter's mind, but he couldn't find an explanation. In the following days, Peter would stake out on the street where the chase happened, hoping to see more of the reasoning behind this alarming situation. He would come to regret it. Peter seemed to have wasted his time. The following day, Peter returned to work, thinking about all the work he had to cover now that he hadn't worked for a few days. When he didn't expect anything, he once again saw the red car. This time, the car didn't drive away once the dog got close. It continued to drive slowly. Only after the dog approached the red car even closer with more aggression, did the red car start to drive away rapidly. Peter didn't hesitate. He started to chase the red car. Somehow, Peter managed to stay close to the red car without losing track of it. He reached for a notepad and wrote down the license plate number. Now that he had enough information to dive deeper into all of this, he decided to let the red car go. That night, Peter decided to visit his father. Not only was it long overdue, but his father's experience as a retired police detective could also be very useful. Peter's father responded with great enthusiasm. As a retired detective, he felt like he was missing out on many demanding cases. He listened with great attention and asked many questions, but one of those questions turned out to be fatal. When Peter's father asked something about the car, Peter responded without thinking much of it that the car was red. His father suddenly turned pale. He became utterly silent and soon after asked Peter to leave. What had Peter dragged his poor father into and what did he know? A day later, Peter drove to work with one thing on his mind. As soon as he closed in on the notorious street, to his surprise, he didn't see the car or the dog at first. However, this morning was about to change drastically. There they were. Peter reached the end of the street and suddenly saw the car entering the street, the dog even more aggressive than usual and barking as if his life depended on it. But there was another guest to appear soon. Riding in the opposite direction, Peter crossed paths with the police. As soon as the police saw the red car, they turned on their sirens. Peter tried to track the police car by watching his back mirror. He could clearly see the police car turn around and start the chase of the red car. At the same time, as Peter didn't mind the dog for a little while, he had to hit the brakes immediately in order to keep himself from hitting the dog. He managed to stop his car just in time. Meanwhile, the police succeeded in stopping the speeding red car. Once they closed in on the car, they tried to persuade the dog to come with them. The red car had nowhere to go now, and with the dog calming down, they would soon make an arrest. Peter saw how they arrested the driver of the red car and got out of his own vehicle, planning to ask the officers whether he had to testify and mostly why this particular dog was chasing the car. But then he was asked to turn around with his hands on the back of his head. Peter was being arrested. 
before his head was pressed up against the hood of his vehicle, he got a glance at the driver of the red truck. Peter's heart dropped. The man was a lot older than he thought, and seemed to be the former police partner of his father. But Peter couldn't afford to wonder as he had to make clear that he himself was innocent. The officers put him in the back of their car, but didn't seem to listen to his attempts to clarify the situation. Before he knew it, Peter was on his way to the police station. Peter was losing his patience and repeatedly asked the officers what his charges were. They finally gave an answer. Sir, you're suspected to be involved in the criminal activities of Mr. James, who was arrested as well. Peter still knew nothing except for the fact that the arrested man was indeed his father's former partner. Peter's lawyer arrived shortly after and was as surprised as Peter himself. He asked Peter if he had noticed anything unusual about his father lately, perhaps mentioning something about his former partner. Peter automatically wanted to say he didn't see much of his father, but then he remembered the strange behavior of his father the other night. The lawyer suddenly stood up, eager to hear more about it. Peter told him how his father was helpful at first, but became silent and even somewhat hostile once Peter mentioned it was about a red car. Peter's lawyer proposed to speak to his father as soon as possible. Peter requested a call, and after a little while he was granted five minutes on the phone. He called his father. Peter's lawyer advised him to just ask questions about Mr. James and not to mention his arrest, but his father didn't cooperate and threatened to hang up the phone multiple times. Until he recognized the phone number, Peter admitted that he was in custody. His father changed his tone of voice and told him to stay cool and call a lawyer. Peter responded, I already did, father, but I need some real help. His father felt responsible. He told Peter before he hung up the phone, hold on tight. It may take me a while, but I'll get you out of there. Right after the call, Peter was escorted back to his room and saw a few detectives had come in by now. None of them looked him in the eye. Peter prepared a little for the interrogation with his lawyer. He felt comfortable as he could prove that the route he drove was just part of his routine to get to work. But that's not what they were asking him. They kept asking about Mr. James. Isn't he a familiar face, young man? You know him, don't you? Followed by, why don't you admit that you just wanted to earn some money? What the hell were they talking about? Then the lawyer stepped in, demanding proof from the detectives. They left the room one by one. Peter was shocked, but his lawyer was more than happy. He reassured Peter that he'd get to leave in no time since the police didn't have any proof. Peter was finally released. The first thing on his mind was to go see his father. Very soon, Peter would arrive at his father's, who had a surprising guest accompanying him. Peter pulled up to the driveway and soon heard loud barks. Not just any barks. This must be the stray dog that was chasing the red car all the time. Peter was shocked and excited because this must mean the truth was finally coming to light. Peter tried to find the dog as he could clearly hear him bark. The more he looked for it, the clearer it became that the dog must be inside the house. Peter knocked on the door and saw the dog come closer. It was the stray dog. Since his father had no mobile phone, Peter had no way of reaching him. Peter wanted to leave and leave him a note, despite the risk of someone else reading it. He kept it short. Call me. Then he left with the dog. Peter went home with the dog. Peter was minutes away from a new discovery. The news would be a turning point for Peter. The news showed images of the arrest of Mr. James. The reporter said it was still unknown what the charges were. However, it must be serious. The reporter continued to tell how the police never revealed the true charges right after arresting a former police officer. However, given the seriousness of the arrest, he must have done something terrible. As Peter re-evaluated the situation, he decided to go for some well-earned shut-eye but not before trying to call his father once more. Since his father didn't call him after he left the note, Peter dialed. The first thing he said was about the dog. Peter calmed his father down by saying he was looking after it and it was safe. Peter wanted to ask his father about the importance of the dog, but his father kept saying that Peter shouldn't watch the news. Peter already did. The next morning, Peter woke up after hearing the doorbell ring repeatedly. It was his lawyer who brought sandwiches and some coffee. He asked the lawyer why he was there that early. We have to do something today. Get dressed, please. Peter decided to take his own car since he needed space to bring the dog along. The lawyer was really pleased with the dog coming along, so he just instructed Peter to follow him and stay close. After driving for a while, Peter realized that they were picking up his father. His father got out of the house and, before getting in with the lawyer, 
looked Peter directly in the eyes. The next and last stop turned out to be the police station. The station was surrounded by the media, and they were photographed before going in. The dog all of a sudden looked far more relaxed than before. Upon entering the police station, Peter and his father were led into an interrogation room to talk about Mr. James. They were asked to provide statements, raising their concerns about Mr. James. They told everything they knew, from Peter's father's experiences with him and his suspicion of criminal activity to Peter's observations of the red car. After that, they were no longer considered suspects and were thanked for their cooperation. The stray dog turned out to be a former police dog used by Mr. James and Peter's father. Mr. James and the drugs he was carrying in the red automobile caused the dog to respond. This clarified the significance of the dog, as well as his peculiar conduct. The police gave the dog to Peter's father as a retirement gift, and he got to keep it. If you like the story, surely the next video that's appearing on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up, and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any of our next videos. A huge kiss, and see you in the next story.